When I first found out about Hasty Arise, I thought I'd unlock some sort of cheat code to Blender. Instant, realistic lighting and backgrounds for my models. Amazing! But then I ran into all sorts of problems. Models floating in mid-air, no realistic shadows, and no way to get a realistic ground. Since then, I've solved all of these issues, and today we'll look at the quickest and easiest ways to get around them, so you can produce even more realistic renders. First, we'll be adding a ground shadow to a car, and then we'll look at an easy way to make a HDRI half tone. Let's get started. So here we are back in Blender. The first thing we're going to do is just swap our render engine to Cycles. Uh, make sure it's set to GPU Compute if you've got that option. Change the number of samples in the viewport to 32 and 64 in the render mode and make sure Denoise is checked for both. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, let's add a HDRI. Now, if you don't know how to do this, if you click on the world settings here, and set the surface where it says color, instead of color, click on this little yellow circle and change it to environment texture. Now we're gonna open up an environment texture. Now I've already downloaded one from Polyhaven. Uh, it's this one here, it's called St. Peter's Square Night. Just go onto Polyhaven and search for it. And actually you can get a nice preview in Polyhaven by clicking on this uh, 3D icon here. And it actually shows you a nice sort of 3D representation of what the HDRI is going to look like. Uh, now you can actually set your resolution that you want to download it. Uh, I've set mine to 8K because I want it to be quite detailed uh, for the render. But you can set it to 4K or even 2K if your computer's really slow. Then just click download. Back in Blender, we're going to, where we've just set this to environment texture, we're going to actually open that now. St. Peter's Square at the top there. Press open image. Now in your rendered view, you should see HDRI appear fine. So the next thing I'm going to do, um, let's add in a car. So I'm using Blender Kit here. Now Blender Kit is free to download. Uh, Blender Kit is free to download. They have a ton of free stuff built into it. But if, also if you pay the full plan, you can kind of get lots of extra stuff as well. Uh, so I'm going to go for the full plan here because I, I actually pay for it and uh, I'm actually going to use this Rolls Royce model here for this, it's pretty nice. Right, so let's add in the Rolls Royce. So if I click on Blender Kit, click the little eyeball, I'll type in Rolls Royce, probably Rolls might be near enough. No, there it is. And we're just going to click and drag this into place here. Okay, once it's loaded like this, um, it basically you can actually see, let me just zoom in a little bit here, switch off the overlays for a minute. You can actually see the Rolls Royce already has picked up the lighting and shadows and everything of the HDRI. It looks great, apart from the fact that it floats. Now the problem with the HDRI is that it certainly looks good in some angles, uh, but in other angles, obviously it doesn't work at all because basically the HDRI is basically an image projected just onto a huge giant sphere, um, kind of infinitely big. And um, it's great for lighting um, and mixed with physical objects, but sometimes it doesn't work for every scene. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna kind of cheat. We're going to actually add in, let's just delete the default light. Let me just show you that. Uh, I'm gonna delete the default light. We'll leave the default camera for now. Um, so we're going to basically line up our camera. I'm going to press Control alt 0 to line up the camera just here. Let's zoom in a little bit here with the camera. And you'll see when I zoom in that actually the HDRI doesn't actually move at all, just the car moves. So we're going to rotate the car. So I'm going to click on the car, press R to rotate, Z to rotate 180 degrees. Um, and obviously this looks kind of nice, but there's kind of a crucial part missing and it's the, the shadow of the car. There's a really easy way to fix this in Blender. We're gonna press Shift A and we're gonna add in a plane. I'm gonna press S to scale and we're gonna scale up the plane. Now you'll see straight away, even though the, pl the plane doesn't have material yet, it's already catching the shadow. So all we need to do, we don't need to add a material. We can just click on here where it says object properties and in visibility, we can actually set this to be a shadow catcher. And now you can see the shadow of the car is perfectly in place. And it looks as though it's, um, you know, basically 
actually in the scene now. So if we render this, let me just move the camera, just maybe tweak a little bit more. Um, maybe come down a little bit, perhaps have a slightly wider lens. Let's go for a 35 millimeter lens, get some of that background in and press F12 to render. And as you can see, that makes a pretty nice shot, pretty realistic and it looks good really all round. Um, so what are the problems with this method? So some of the problems are things like this. So if I want to move the camera backwards or forwards, uh, the HDRI doesn't actually move, just the camera moves and the Rolls Royce moves, but the actual HDRI doesn't move. So you do, can't ever have a sense of movement within the HDRI. You can sort of pan and tilt all around. Um, and you know, you can, this works for quite a few situations, but if you want to actually add any movement or you want to take a picture in a different part of the HDRI, you just can't do it. So let's, uh, let's find a way to kind of solve those problems and come up with another solution. So starting with a fresh scene in Blender, uh, what we're going to do is press A to select everything, X to delete everything. Shift A, we're going to add in a mesh UV sphere. We're going to press S to scale and 50 to scale it up 50 times. We're also going to right click it and just use Shade Auto Smooth. Now if we press Tab to go into edit mode, you can see all these vertices that make up the, the cube. And let's just press, let's just click into viewport shading so we can see all of these vertices. Now if you press one on your number pad uh, and let's select all of these vertices at the bottom half of the cube right we're going to press s to scale z to scale just on the z axis and then zero and that basically flattens them all out so they're all on the zero plane pressing n on your keyboard um, you can actually see under the item transform we're going to set this to zero so basically it gives us a half dome an excellent half dome there so if you just press Alt and click on this sort of second ring here and press G twice, we're just going to slide those in a little bit there. Now Alt and click on the outer ring and we're going to press Ctrl and B to bevel and we're just going to bevel it a little bit and roll your mouse wheel to get a few extra bevels in. This is basically just to smooth off this corner of the curve. So back in viewport shading we kind of see we've got this nice dome with kind of just rounded off corner here. Just back into edit mode, the last thing we need to do is press A to select all. Um, it's Alt and N to get to the normals menu and we're going to flip the normals. Now basically Blender, when you make an object in Blender, Blender usually expects the outside of the object to be the part that you see. But this time we're actually going to be inside of the object so we want the texture to make sure it wraps on the inside of the, the uh, half dome instead of on the outside so that's why we have to flip the normals. So tab out of edit mode, the next thing we're going to do is actually add the texture to this dome. Back at Polyhaven, I've downloaded this HDR called Outdoor Theatre. Uh, it's quite a nice one, it's, we've got lots of space in the middle to put a car. And we've got, we've got this nice courtyard with some sunlight. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually add a material this time. Let's call it uh, Dome. And if you pop into the shading tab, we can see all the parts of the uh, all the parts of the shader here. Click on the principled BSDF and press X to delete it. Uh, we're going to add in uh, two types of shaders. One is an emission shader, and one so Shift A, and you can search for a diffuse shader. Right. And the next thing we need to do is add a mix shader. So what we're going to do, we're going to connect the mix shader to the surface and the emission shader in the top slot and the diffuse shader in the bottom slot. Now basically what this is doing is giving us half of an emission shader which is a light shader and half of it is a diffuse shader. So now if we add in an environment texture and we connect that to the color and that to the color there and we open this uh, the HDRI that we've just downloaded you can see we've got it mapped on the uh, the dome and actually from the inside of the dome it already looks as though it's kind of halfway there so we've got a problem with the floor sort of the mapping on the floor is not quite right so the easiest way to get around this is to select the old outdoor theater press Control and T and that gives us, if you've got Node Wrangler installed, which 
I assume you have. If you haven't, it's under your edit preferences menu, built into built into Blender. It's called Node Wrangler. Uh, but this gives you a nice mapping um, setup already. So it's the mapping node and the texture coordinate node. Swap the generated coordinate there to the object coordinate. And then what you can do uh, is by moving the Z, you can actually move the HDRI within the sphere. Now I find this moves a little bit too much. So if you hold down the shift key, you can move it a bit slower. So we're just gonna move it until we get, you see the bottom of this wall here? We're just gonna move it just as, so it just stops curving. So basically we want the curve of the HDRI just to be in this crease here. Okay, brilliant. So, one more thing we can do actually, because if you see when I zoom out here, you can see the outside. We're actually gonna add in another shader here, so we can basically see through the outside of the cube. So if you press A, Shift A, we're going to add in a mix shader. It's gonna go here. And we're going to add in a transparent shader. And that's gonna go at the bottom here. Hook it up there. And now we're going to add in a geometry node as a, a sort of factor. So basically anything that is back facing, just zoom in so you can see that, back facing is the factor. So now if you pop into rendered view, nothing happens. And that is because I've forgotten to set our render engine to cycles. GPU compute, and let's just do the same as before where we just reduce the number of samples a bit. Okay, so now we can actually see, we're looking at the inside of our dome and we can't see the outside at all. So it just makes it work a bit easier for us. Okay, so now we need to add a car. So let's hop into Blender Kit again. This time I'm gonna search for a Caterham, Caterham, which is a, a kind of quite a famous uh, British sports car. So we're gonna drag, oh, they're not working quite yet. Let's just zoom in a little bit, get inside the HDRI. Just gonna drag it and we're gonna drop it in the middle. And now you can see straight away, we can actually zoom in and out of the HDRI and you can actually see the floor moving in a sensible way. Now, basically because we've mixed the, let me go back into the shading tab. Because we've mixed the emission shader, that gives us the light for the HDRI. Let's just uh, take the world lighting down. And also we've got the diffuse color and that is what's gonna enable us to have shadows and things sort of basically, you know, making contact with the HDRI. Now the shadow effect isn't that strong. So what we're going to do, we're gonna add in a sunlight to basically mimic the sunlight that is already existing in this image. So press Shift and A, we're gonna add in the sun, a light, the sunlight. G, Z, let's grab it up a little bit. A nice little trick I like to use, because we want to basically have this sunlight aligning with the real light that's in the, the dome. So if you zoom out a bit, you can see where the sun is in the sky. So I'm gonna basically just try and get the rotate around the dome until I can get the sun right on the side. And then I can see it just there and I'm gonna press R. I'm just gonna rotate the sun lamp in our image just so it kind of points perpendicular to where the sun's coming from and this should match up the shadows pretty good. Now, the only problem is if I zoom into here again, let's zoom into the car, you can see actually we still can't see the shadows from the sun. Now the reason for this is the dome of the HDRI is actually blocking the sunlight from getting inside this um, the dome. So all we need to do is just click on object properties with the, the dome selected. And where it says um, visibility, just scroll down and click on shadow and uncheck the shadow. And you can see straight away, we can just start to see the shadow appearing. So to make the shadow more prominent, um, let's click on the sun again and we're going to increase the strength of the sun to about, we could go to maybe 10, something like that. And what we're trying to do is actually match, if you look at the shadows in the existing image, 
We're trying to match the darkness of the shadows in the existing image so it kind of matches better. If you don't want this to light up too much, you can just click on the, the sphere again and just increase the roughness of the BSDF so it doesn't reflect so much sunlight, sunlight away from it. Great, now the last thing we need to do, let's go back into layout mode, uh, is add a camera. So shift A, add a camera, control alt zero to put to the camera in the viewport. Um, what we could do, let's go for a bit more of a zoomed in look on this one. Uh, if you go to walk animation, so that's under view, navigation, walk navigation, you can actually use your mouse to aim the camera and the AS, ASDW keys just to move in and out. Let's just get this nicely sort of positioned over here. Um, try and get some of that nice background in. And what we're going to do, we're going to actually add some depth of field because now we have sort of a physical representation of the HDRI. We can actually get realistic depth of field in. So I'm going to right click on the headlight with shift to move the uh, 3D cursor to there. I'm going to press shift and A and we're going to add in an empty there. This is going to be our focus point for our camera. So now with the camera selected up here, I've just selected the camera again. Um, you can click on the depth of field and the focus object, we can choose the empty. And now if we go into camera mode by pressing zero, we can actually alter the aperture to increase the amount of depth of field that we want to get on the image. I think in this case, probably something around 1.2 is quite nice. Uh, let's save that, press F12 to render. It's looking pretty nice. We've just got a few little glitches of uh, sort of light reflecting off. We're going to fix that quite easily. Let's just go into our render settings. And where it says light paths and clumping, just increase the direct light to 10. That should clump some of those little fireflies we're getting. Press F12 again, and that gets rid of them all perfectly. So there you go. This is a really fun and easy way to get great results from your HDRI and an object in Blender.